Happy Sunday. I hope you are enjoying this house meeting, the first house meeting we've ever had in Virginia. So super exciting to meet new people and to watch the Holy Spirit just make a way. So this is the final episode of this house meeting. Next, I'll be producing the next house meeting that we had in Richmond. So make sure you hit your notification bell. Click like, leave me a comment. I love to hear back from you. Also, guys. Virginia will be coming back your way in March of 2024. So make sure you sign up for my newsletter so that you don't miss out if we are in your area. All right, here we go. Okay. You know what? So I tell my children, a wise choice is one you won't regret five days later. Right? You're not going to regret this. Yeah. You're not going to regret this. And if you are, you can be mad at them, not me. Right. Okay. <laughs> tell me your name. I'm Sue. Sue. I'm Sue. Yeah, I'm Sue. Fantastic. Take a step forward for me. Go ahead. Have you ever seen anything like this, experienced this before? No, this is I me just trying to relax you a little right, bit because right. you're super stiff, and that's fine. That's natural. Yeah. 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 So you've never seen anything like this before? No, I just, I've seen a video of yours not so long And were you like, unfollow? No, 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 not at all. No. All right. So how do you feel being in the atmosphere? Because it's different kind of when you watch it online, and then you're like right. in it, right? Right. I guess I'm all right. I guess I'm all right with it. That's kind of was my first. I was like, I feel like I'm supposed to be getting up and running right now, but something in me feels right with this, right? And I was in a cessatious Baptist church. Like I could teach against this stuff. I was a really good teacher against the ways of the spirit. Then I got smoked in my closet. So, you know, that's just how, how he does. All right, go ahead and close your eyes for me. God, I thank you for Sue. Just try and relax into that for a moment. I want you to forget anybody else is here. It's just you and the Lord. There it is. Thank you, Father. That's quick. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> <There we> go. <laughs> it's just the presence of the Lord. See, I mean, you know him. He knows you. That's why this is so quick, because you understand the intimacy of the kingdom. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, for being intimate with her. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for empowering her and for revealing I'm going to speak the same thing over you that I think I spoke over Shirley, just that veil. I see that veil being dropped. And it's kind of like it's turned from a window to a screen in the window. In the <laughs> so happy you're getting this on video. Oh my goodness, help me. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't really want me. You really like it, don't you? It's like, well, my legs want to quiver. <laughs> She's got you, baby. Oh, you're good. You're good. You're good. Go down. There. Oh, my word. What were you saying? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to finish telling you. I know she's like, I want to hear the rest of the word. All right, listen to me. Well, in the spring, we, we, we kind of we open up our windows and we let the screen, right? We have these screen and we let the air come in. But there's a whole other level of the air flow when we actually remove the screen. And you've kind of been in a season where you've opened up the window, but there's still a screen there because you find safety behind that screen. But God is saying, you haven't experienced the fullness of my wind yet. And so I declare a removal of that screen, every veil being removed, every scale being removed, witchcraft, control, religion being loosed right now in the name of Jesus. But you're free in the spirit. You understand, I keep speaking against witchcraft, control, religion, because when God gave me the word freedom, when he gave me the word freedom, I know what he wants to break off in the room. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Take the screen out. You haven't experienced the blow of the kingdom yet. You just have a little bit of the breeze. Thank you, Lord. All right. <laughs> it's fun up here, isn't it? Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, Crystal, I've gotten a chance to meet you, and I've gotten a chance to hear your heart. And so I'm going to pray for you, and some of it's going to be prophetic, and some of it's just going to be like the authority that I'm going to take, yeah. right? Because we, we, we can speak prophetically over people and wait on God, but then there are times when we know things about God, and we can put a demand, yes. what well, we feel like is right for that person. Right. So you're going to hear a little bit of a mixture, because I do know some things. And I'm going to speak over you just divine strategies, also divine connections, based on what you have communicated is your heart. And, and I speak to every barrier, every opposition, and I tell it to be moved on your behalf. Like, we stand together. Like, I'm going to stand beside you. 
And we speak to all that opposition and we tell it to move in the name of Jesus. We declare that every mountain is moved. I declare an easy passageway. I declare favor among man and with God. Just as Jesus grew in stature with favor with man and God, so also you are growing in favor, not just with God, Crystal, but with man as well. And I call forth divine connections, political connections, governmental connections. Whoa. I speak that over you in the name of Jesus. I speak favor with pastors over you in the name of Jesus. I speak financial abundance over you. Listen to me, Crystal. Go ahead and see her in a chair. Listen to me, Crystal. If God calls you to it, he's already provided for it. He doesn't run out of resources. He doesn't run out of time. And he doesn't run out of energy. And he puts all of that in you. So I speak over you, Crystal. You will never run out of the resource. You will never run out of time. And you will never run out of energy. Because there's always time, energy, and resource to do the will of God. Come on. You understand that the Bible says that he's put into you the energy, the energy of the kingdom. Because the energy in the Greek is the energy, a spiritual energy, not just to do the will of God, but to will to do. Come on. It says that in Philippians. That's good news. That means when I lack motivation, I can declare that God, come on. <laughs> come on. Some of this I just know because I'm with you, right? So when I'm lacking motivation, I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. God says, I haven't just put it in you to do it. I put it into you will to do, to will to do. So I speak to your wanter. I speak to your wanter and I speak the motivations of the kingdom, the energy of the spirit to rise up. And I break off lack of motivation, lack of passion. So trying to steal your energy, steal your resource, and steal your time. And I'm going to speak it over you one more time. The energy, the time, and the resource of the kingdom is in you. Go in to move out. Go in to move out. And I speak this over you in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> All right. <sighs> you good? So you obviously told me that you have an intercessory gift. So again, like nothing super, I mean, there's prophetic stuff in here too. But when I say this, I'm going to speak the word watchman over you, right? Because we know that intercessors are called to be watchmen. But I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the obedience that you've brought into her life, that she has stood high upon a wall. And I almost see you like in your quiet time. So sometimes when I see intercessors and I see them on their knees, I'm going to go ahead and let her go. She goes, I see them on their knees. And there are other times when I see them standing on a chair in their closet. And you are that kind of an intercessor where you're like, man, there are times when God tells me to get low, but there have been times that God has told me to stand high. And the Bible talks about how we stand high upon the heights and the enemy has beat as fine dust beneath your feet. And you have crushed some demons in your lifetime because you've chosen to stand on a chair in your closet. And if you've never showed, stood on a chair in your closet, you need to start standing on a chair in your closet. Because God says, position yourself up on a wall so that you can see farther out. See, a watchman gets up on a wall so he can see miles out before the enemy even gets close to the wall. And God wants to sharpen your vision in that manner that as you position yourself up higher, you'll see out farther. There have been times you've seen the enemy when he's around the corner, but God says you're going to see him when he's a mile away. And you're going to begin to speak into that, and he's not even going to get close to the wall. The people that you intercede for, he's not even going to get close. The enemy, that, that verse that says, every weapon formed against you shall not prosper. You're the woman that's reaching out. You're speaking to the arrows that have been shot a, a mile out. And when you're praying, those, those arrows are, are declared limp in the spirit. And I speak this over you in the name of Jesus. See, I mean, the Lord's already given you word. God, I thank you for Alvin. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the perspective that you've given him of the kingdom. That no matter what difficulty he's in, God, that he understands the narrative of the kingdom. And he understands the power that he has to shift, to change his mind. When we think about brain function, there's, there's this funky little brain. It's your mohawk. It's called your anterior cingulate gyrus. It's back here. It's actually how the brain shifts from thought to thought. And people who struggle with panic anxiety attacks, who have a lot of anxiety, that their anterior cingulate gyrus gets real hot. It gets on fire. So if we did a brain scan, it would be like all lit up. And, and they, they have the inability to shift from thought to thought. They have no emotional agility. Emotional agility is something that we talk about a lot scientifically. We talk about it in the business world. I'm a business coach, obviously a brain health coach as well. But <laughs> what we don't realize is it's actually a gift of the spirit. The ability to shift from emotion to emotion. But God says not only have you learned how to be emotionally agile, just like you said that you can throw the emotional agility out into the atmosphere, 
and shift the narrative of the atmosphere. I'm going to say that again. And when I say, I'm not just talking about the people around you. I'm talking about the second heaven. Do you understand? Third heaven, second heaven, first heaven. Right? We're standing in the first heavens. Second heavens is the warfare. We're positioned in the third heavens with Christ. Right? So from the third heavens, we can look down on spiritual warfare and throw an emotional change, throw an emo- a change of the narrative into the second heavens and cause a shift in the warfare. The Bible says that we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, that the weapons of warfare are not that we have are not of this world. And, and you have great weapons in the spirit, and you have an understanding. I, I really feel like the Lord has opened your eyes that you've seen things in the second heavens. That, And if you haven't, he's going to do that. He's going to open up your eyes to see uh, angelic activity. He's going to open up your eyes to have an understanding and a knowing of demonic activity. And, and in a moment, you're going to know, oh, this is my opportunity to change the narrative, speak into the narrative, claim the narrative. See, when we see angel, when I sense angelic movement, I claim that narrative. I'm like, there's an angel there, and I'm going to claim it this way. When I was talking to my friend earlier from wherever he was from, he was talking about a vision he had of an angel, and I said, was the angel standing or was he flying? Because I was looking for, is it a warfare angel? Is it a warrior angel? Or is it a ministering angel, Right. And so giving you the understanding of what is this angel, what is this presence, why is it here, and how do I begin to come into an agreement with the narrative of the kingdom right now? And a lot of times that will require to flip the narrative, that emotional agility and the ability to just change even the emotions of the atmosphere. And so, God, I thank you for my brother. Go ahead and close your eyes for me. I thank you for my brother, Alvin. I thank you, Holy Spirit, just for the confidence that you've given to him. I thank you, Lord, for the influence you've given to him not just through the people around him, but the influence you've given to him in the kingdom, the influence that you've given to him over demons and angels. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the authority that he walks in. I thank you for the fun that you've given to him. And I thank you that he does. He brings that fun into spaces and places. People like you, Alvin. Not everybody likes everybody. But people like you. They're like Alvin's here, like Alvin. It's like when whatever his name walked into the bar, and they were like, Norm, you know? Is, is that true? Is that, okay. Very true. So, but sometimes weird stuff comes in my head, and I'm like, this no, has to be it's God. true. Like, I can't believe I remember that. My dad watched that when I was a kid. Like, and like Norm, yeah. Yeah. So, God, I thank you. that and People love when you show up. Right, because it's kind of like you bring the party of the kingdom, and you bring the fun of the kingdom, and you carry like the the things, you know, and like you're like it's time to party. And um, if somebody had an anointing of like confetti and glitter, other than sparkles, who was sparkles? Karen was sparkles. Yeah, cracker cracker. That's what I mean, firecracker. So God, I thank you for Alvin. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just remind him of the power that he carries. And I think we we are in a culture that has lost any sense of fun. And sometimes we diminish the power of having fun. And and I, I pray that you would recognize that the power that that is, the weapon of just bringing fun into the atmosphere. I've brought a party with me. I brought a party of of angels. I've brought food from the kingdom. I've brought the bread of heaven, and I brought some oil. I brought some oil. And so, God, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the empowerment of that. And I bless you, Alvin, and Alvin, in the name of Jesus. And I pray that the love of God would be the narrative of your life. That there would never be a night that you go to bed wondering, does God love me? Is God disappointed in me? But every night when you go to bed, that you would know, my narrative is God loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. The narrative always. And I speak this over you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You're welcome. Oh, yeah, we haven't done Belinda yet. I mean, you're going with us tomorrow night, right? You're going with us tomorrow night, right? Get her. (laughs) And we'll be driving, too, and I think we're fun. Just saying. I said, and we'll be going too, and I think we're fun. I'm glad I didn't go to the <laughs> All right, take a step forward for me. God, I thank you for Belinda, and I thank you, Holy Spirit, for um, 
again, just the uh, kind of like feeling like that wildness, the willingness to take risks. So it's a different wildness than Taylor had. Uh, for you, it's well, and I, I know, I, I know this, but I feel like even if I didn't know this, I would have said this. It's more like taking risks in business, financial risks, risks in real things where real things are at stake, right? It's one thing. Sometimes we take risks in the spirit, um, and it's another thing to actually put your money on it, right? Like I'll put my money on it. And, and I just really feel like the Lord is, and, and this is connected, I guess, yeah, all, obviously you guys go together, just with the investment of the talents. And I just really, God has given you the ability to, the, the, the not ability, the anointing to cultivate atmospheres. And people are looking for atmospheres that only you can sit, set. And so the atmospheres that God wants to reveal to you, you're not going to find them on Pinterest. You're not going to find them on Google. God says, if you come to me, I'm going to show you atmospheres that have yet to be unveiled. Atmospheres in the spirit, atmospheres where people come, and when they walk in, and I'm going to say this very intentionally, where they walk in and they immediately begin to crouch down because they feel the glory so heavily in the room. So you talked today a little bit about a homey atmosphere, and I experienced that going in there. This is not that. I really feel like the Lord's going to shift it to another level. It's, it's going to be a kingdom home, a kingdom atmosphere where people are like, I don't know what it is. I can't explain it. People are going to come in broken, and they're going to leave healed. People are going to come in sick, and they're going to leave healed. People are going to come in distressed, and they're going to leave feeling empowered, equipped. We're talking about an atmosphere that is supernatural, Stop looking for a natural atmosphere. I don't care what the color of the paint is on the walls. Smear it with the Holy Ghost. Write verses on the walls. Write verses on the piers. Loose the Word of God because life is in the Word. Life is in the Word. And so I thank you, Father, for the creativity that you've given to her to cultivate an atmosphere that is yet to be unveiled. A kingdom atmosphere, a king, I, I, I really, because I, I want you to see how I'm seeing it in my mind. Like people walking in and they're just kind of starting to almost crouch down in reverence and in awe because there's a presence in here that overwhelms me and overtakes me. And I can't explain it, but I don't want to leave this place. I don't want to leave this spot. And so God, I thank you. I don't know how it's going to be done. I don't need to know how it's going to be done. God knows how it's going to be done. He's going to give it to you, Belinda. He's going to reveal it to you. And so, God, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for this anointing to cultivate an atmosphere that is yet to be unveiled. And again, if you ask him, he's going to show you. Because it delights the Father to reveal his mysteries to his children. He delights him to show you the greater portions of what he has in mind for you. So I thank you, Father, for confidence. Confidence confidence in the spirit again and i think i spoke over you the blessed assurance right did i speak anyways we're too slow to answer i speak the blessed assurance over you also he's like i don't know i'm still drunk in the spirit and i speak over both of you unity come on and look, listen to me because i'm a marriage counselor so i know this the world and, and church will tell us that unity means we always agree and that's not what it means. Unity actually means we feel free to disagree. I feel safe to disagree. And I feel confident that in Christ we can come to an agreement, we can make a decision, and we can unify in it even if we don't agree. See, that, that's supernatural. Because if we always agree on everything, that's dysfunction, y'all. Come on. That's probably a narcissist in your house. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> I'm just going to say it the way it is. But God wants to bring a unity in your mind that's free. It's free. Where no one of you feels squelched over the other one. No one's opinion takes precedence over. But each person's opinions are considered very prayerfully, taken very seriously. Taken very seriously. When I speak, and I, I, I was telling Karen and Jen this last night, me and my husband and I about seven or eight years ago, we had to break free from a lot of just really bad theology. And and the freedom that we found was, oh, we get to define our marriage. We get to define our roles. The church doesn't get to do that for us. We get to prayerfully define for this season 
What do our roles look like? What does our marriage look like? We get to prayerfully, dis- and, and that requires a leaning into the Holy Spirit, not a leaning into the religion. See? And God is bringing that freedom into your marriage for each season, for each decision, for each business, where you get to decide what will our roles be this time. We did it this way last time, but let's pray about this time. See, because every season is different. We have kids, we have money, we don't have money, we have much, we have lack, whatever it is, right? And so it requires us to step in, in and out of different roles, and it requires a continual ear to the Holy Spirit. But when we let the church define what it's going to look like, that's easy, and it's broken. It's broken. There's no freedom in that, and there's no intimacy in that. And so I thank you, Holy Spirit. And so I just speak that unity over your marriage, that unity over your marriage, oneness of mind, oneness of heart, oneness of mind, oneness of heart. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for making them, causing them to be one. Come on, don't fear disagreement. Don't fear poking the bear. Come on, because sometimes the bear needs to be poked a little. I'm, I'm sorry, Blake, but sometimes the bear needs to be poked a little. She's the bear. Some, come here, come here. We have counseling for that. We have counseling for that. Good. <laughs> sometimes the bear needs to be poked. You know, I mean, I work, I work with people that are like, I don't want to poke the bear. I'm like, wake the bear up. It's time for the bear to be delivered. Like, you're going to live the rest of your life walking on eggshells. I'm not saying you guys do that. I'm just saying don't be afraid of poking the bear in each, in each other, right? You each have demons and, and bears and, you know, but that's how we better each other. That's how we better each other is by poking each other's bears. And that's how we become better together. And most importantly, that's how we become most impactful for the kingdom. Because you're better together. You're better together. And I speak this over both of you in the name of Jesus Christ. You're welcome.